Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. It's wonderful to have you here. And I have with me an issue, a recent issue of New Scientist Magazine. I am a subscriber. I am not promoting New Scientist Magazine, just so you know, but yes, I do subscribe. And this is one of the weekly issues. They're all weekly issues, September 3rd through the 9th, 2016. And this one in particular grabbed my attention when it came in. Uh, the title was The Metaphysics Issue. How Science Answers Philosophy's Deepest Questions. And I thought, oh, new scientists, you're killing me. You know, uh, they, they tend to feel that science can address all these, these big, deep questions. It's not just them. It's actually an attitude in our society that we're seeing on the increase. It's called scientism. That's at least one word. There's also naturalism, materialism. Let me just stick with scientism. Uh, generally, uh, it's a worldview that uh, tends to adopt the idea that somehow we can all the truths that are worth knowing and even perhaps the only truth that the, the truths that you can actually determine are true are really only accessible through science that somehow through science we can access truths but outside of science you just can't uh, you're just stuck you'll never know if the things outside the reach of science are true or false uh, it's not exactly the same as naturalism and materialism though a lot of these isms frankly are related and New Scientist tends to go in this direction sometimes. It really is pretty irritating. Uh, but I do have to give them some credit for this particular issue. I do feel they restrained themselves some because I tend to knock on New Scientist. If you've seen the webcast before when I bring up one of their articles, sometimes I'll talk about the love-hate relationship I have with New Scientist. And in this one, I thought it would just be maximally irritating. They're going to address, you know, why do I exist? Why does anything exist? What is reality? What is consciousness? Uh, how do I know if God, you know, exists or not? It was, I thought, oh man, new scientists, you're really going to make me angry with this one. And generally, they sort of address things like they normally do. It's a, a bit of a, ah, it's a little bit of arrogance to think, you know, maybe we can start to answer some of these questions. But really, they do tame it back a little bit. Uh, meta, what is metaphysics, by the way, the, the core of this issue? Metaphysics is generally that issue of uh, study and thought that, sort of rises above actual physics, the physical sciences, those questions that you generally can't address uh, with the sciences, and yet which are real questions that truly are true or false. And so they're just going to try and tackle them as best they can. The articles are what you might expect, like there's one titled here, Where Do Good and Evil Come From? It's interesting. Generally, they try to boil it down to evolution and biology again, which frankly are the kind of arguments that don't really answer the question. In fact, it does have some self-contradictions. In the last paragraph, for instance, they say, good and evil don't exist in any real sense. Well, there you go. Good and evil are like unicorns and leprechauns and the rest. But then in the very same paragraph, they say, our sense of morality can eliminate or at least minimize evil in society. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If evil doesn't exist, then what is there to minimize in society? Uh, that's often the case with people who don't recognize a God and true evil and good in their existence. Uh, they tend to have it both ways. Evil and good don't exist, and yet we somehow do want to recognize things as evil uh, or good. We just want them to be the things that we think are evil or good. So you get that kind of stuff from this, uh, from this particular issue. But what jumps out at me just because it's, no matter what I do and what I focus on in uh, my life's work, can we ever know if God exists? Another interesting heading. Now, it's interesting they don't make it does God exist or not. And that's where I'd say they pull back a little bit from what perhaps is some of their instincts in this particular piece. It's full of a bit of nonsense, as many of them are. Uh, for instance, they try to suggest that we can't use science in any way to see if there's evidence that there actually is a creator. That's not exactly true. Actually, they have to rule out God to approach things the way they do with naturalism and materialism. And then go figure. If you've ruled out a possibility from your worldview, then who's surprised when you don't discover that possibility within your worldview? Uh, it's actually full of a whole lot of looping like that. Uh, in general in the magazine and their approach to metaphysical questions. But it really does bring out the question for me, can you, can you prove everything only through science or is it true that only the only worthwhile things that we can know are true or false are through science? Well, it's often strongly asserted that's true, but it's a self-defeating assertion. Uh, you can't actually prove, for instance, 
the fact, quote unquote, that only science gives you access to all true facts because science can never prove that science alone is a way to access all true things. It just, it just can't. In fact, if you look at the foundations of science, there's a worldview, there's a set of assumptions that help make science work. And yet you can't actually use science to prove that the logic and the approach is all true itself. It's a, it's a self-defeating kind of position. And frankly, it goes counter to our Creator's own revelation. God Himself points out in passages such as 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 that there are spiritual truths that can only be understood spiritually. There are things we need to access as human beings in His creation when it comes to morality, uh, the way of right and wrong, what our purpose in life is, that are only available because our Creator reveals those things to them, uh, to us. They can't be accessed in any other way. Uh, anyway, I enjoy the magazine. It's interesting to see these people uh, try to address these questions, but they remind me of the Apostle Paul uh, who was telling the philosophers of his day in Greece that really without God's revelation, it's like people stumbling in the dark, trying to grope for God and trying to find Him. But without inviting His revelation, without letting Him work with you, seeking to obey what He shows you, it's really a fruitless effort. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out all we have available at tomorrowsworld.org.